نحمد سبحانه ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفوته من خلقه وحبيبه قد بلغ الرسالة وأدى الأمانة ونصح الأمة وكشف الغمة وجاهد في سبيل دينه حتى أتاه اليقين فاللهم اجزه عنا وعن والدينا وعن الإسلام والمسلمين خير ما جازيت به نبيا عن قومه ورسولا عن أمته اللهم أحينا على سنته وأمتنا على ملته واحشرنا تحت لوائه وأوردنا حوضه واسقنا من يده الشريفة شربة هنيئة لا نظمأ بعدها أبدا اللهم أمين We are continuing to track the stories of the children of Israel and one of the major stories that Surat Al-Baqarah was named after is the story of the children of Israel and the cow we will learn a lot of lessons from their experience as we have been doing this uh, throughout this series and the children of Israel have been used mostly in the Quran as a pilot learning community as we look at Adam السلام, the father of humanity he is also a pilot human being he was the first human being and his experience has been repeatedly mentioned in the Quran to teach us lessons the same for the children of Israel the same for the story of Pharaoh and Musa very important stories and all these stories have one thing in common that there are lessons for us to learn لقد كان في قصصهم عبرة لأولي الألباب there are lessons to learn for those who have reflective minds so we will need to focus on the lessons not on the subject community our lessons is what matters for us so here is the references as you see on the screen وَإِذْ قَالَ مُوسَى لِقَوْمِهِ اذبحوا بقرة. There is a background. Moses did not come all of a sudden telling them slaughter a cow. No. There is a story behind it. But one of the styles of the Quran is to give you the incidents and then to give you the summary of the story. I will follow the style of the Quran and let you learn as the Quran itself gives us the story. So I'm not going to tell you the story or undercut the story by telling it to you beforehand. So let us go with the story as is and then we'll get to the details later on. Here is Moses السلام, talking to his community on the background of a problem that they presented to him. We'll know what the problem is later on. So he tells them what Allah told him. إِذْبَحُوا بَقَرَةً So when he tells them إِذْبَحُوا بَقَرَةً Slaughter a cow. He gave them a command. Right? How do they respond? They respond with both mockery and questioning. قَالُوا أَتَتَّخِذُونَ هُزُوَةً They are mocking him and accusing him of mocking them. As Moses was a joke man or a stand-up comedian, Moses is a prophet, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and he is serious when he talks to them. And as a prophet and a messenger, when he talks to his com- community, he is only communicating a message from Allah. So this is not an idea. This is not an offer. This is not a proposal. This is a command. Ifbahu bzigat al-amr, slaughter a cow. So they say, أَتَتَّخِذُنَا هُزُوَا How could it be that they justify that statement when he is telling them that Allah is the one telling you to slaughter the cow? إِنَّ اللَّهَ 
يأمركم أن تذبحوا بقرة. How could they say that the order of Allah coming to them through Moses is a mockery or a joke? Except for one fact. They did not take Moses seriously. Not because he was not worthy of the serious reception, but because they rejected him. Their habit is أَفَكُلَّمَا جَاءَكُمْ رَسُولٌ بِمَا لَا تَهْوَى أَنفُسُكُمْ إِسْتَكْبَرْتُمْ فَفَرِيقًا كَذَّبْتُمْ That's what they are doing to Moses. وَفَرِيقًا تَقْتُلُونَ And that's what they did to other prophets. So the reason that they have justification in their head is Moses is not serious. Moses is not. And that's why they kept telling him say this to your Lord. They never said to Allah. They never said to our Lord or to even the Lord. Your Lord. Which means it's not ours. So you put this in context and you understand that the reason they find justification for mocking Musa and Allah's command is because they never believed Moses. This is the only explanation. And their language speaks of that. قالوا أتتخذون هزوا قال أعوذ بالله أن أكون من الجاهلين I seek refuge in Allah that I may be among the ignorant ones. So if somebody is talking seriously and somebody is mocking him, that is ignorance. Because what he's saying may benefit you. If you don't take it seriously, you are the loser. And this is one of the lessons we learn here. Then they go back and say, tell your Lord or call upon your Lord to tell us what kind of cow is it. See, in the beginning, any cow would suffice. إن الله يأمركم أن تذبحوا بقرة Any cow, because cow is mentioned as unknown, which means unqualified. There is no specifications. So any cow, even a sick cow, could have done it. Right? So he tells them, إن الله يأمركم أن تذبحوا بقرة First they mock him. Then when he tells them, I am not playing games with you, I am not an ignorant person, they say, tell your Lord, and this is the language they are using, tell your Lord, call upon your Lord to tell us what kind of cow. So the description starts to come. قال إنه يقول إنها بقرة لا فارض ولا بكر. He is saying that it is a cow that's neither uh, too old or too young. Something in between. It is in the middle between the two. فَفْعَلُوا مَا تُؤْمَرُونَ Take it from me and do what you're commanded to do. Do they heed? No. Because they are not after submission or obedience. They don't believe. So they will not submit. So what else? They say, call upon your Lord to tell us what color cow is it. So now they know that it is a middle-aged cow. So any middle-aged cow could have done it, right? So all scholars that you read in the interpretations would say, this is a methodology of expressing reluctance, rebellion, and disobedience. And the punishment is, you will get complicated orders and more expensive ones. What is the lesson here? The lesson is, when you read in the Quran, for example, that Allah tells you that the kafara for your yameen is to feed 10 people, right? فَكَفَّارَةُ إِطْعَامُ عَشْرَةِ مَسَكِينَ مِنْ أَوْسَطِ مَا تُطْعِمُونَ أَهْلِيكُمْ أَوْ كِسْوَتُهُمْ or to clothe them أَوْ تَحْرِيرُ رَقَبَةُ Look at this. فَمَنْ لَمْ يَجِدْ فَصِيَامُ ثَلَاثَةِ أَيَّامِ Which means the kafara for uh, not fulfilling your swearing is one of those. Then what question do you have? 
it's clear. You have four options. You have three options. And if you couldn't do any of them, then fasting three days would suffice. What questions do you have? No, some people have questions because they want to ask questions. And I get those questions all the time. You get the initial question and you give the answer. And the person asking either doesn't agree or he doesn't understand, presumably, or he wants a different answer. So he keeps ans asking the same question again and again. You keep repeating the answer again and again. And still, people want what they want. So the lesson here is, when you get an answer that is clear, take it. Take it. Don't keep asking questions. Don't keep making things more complex than they already are. So they, he's, they said, مَا لَوْنُهَا What color cow is it? So he says, قَالَ إِنَّهُ يَقُولُ إِنَّهَا بَقَرَةٌ صَفْرَاءٌ That's not going to be enough. فَاقِعٌ لَوْنُهَا Right? Bright yellow cow. These are two descriptions. What is the third description? تَصُرُّ النَّاظِرِينَ it's pleasant in the eyes of those who are looking at it. How do you measure this? Safra, you can get a yellow cow. Faqir launuha, you could get a bright yellow cow. But how do you make sure that it meets the third description? So now Allah is making it more difficult for them because they are making it more difficult for themselves. Then is this enough? Do they get the answer? No. Keep going. They say, call upon your Lord to clear for us what exactly is this kind of cow because cows look alike. Yeah, if you want them to look alike, they all have four legs, one head, one tail, right? But you ask for description, and the description is given to you very clearly. So follow the guide that you ask it for. No, it's not enough. So, and they promise and say, and we will be, if Allah wills, we will be guided. We will follow the guidance. Presumably they would, right? So he tells them, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, that it is a cow that is neither docile to till the soil nor does it water the tilth. إنها بقرة لا ذلول. It is not domesticated. It's a wild cow, right? It's not a farm working cow. It's not trained to live with people and be obedient to people. It's a wild cow. So now they are getting out of their way to look for a wild cow. So their farm cows would not qualify. And then, Musallama, it is without blemish. La shiyata fiha. There is no anything wrong with it. So it has to be a perfect yellow, bright yellow cow. And it has to be pleasing. And it's not a working cow. It's not a domestic farm cow. Which means what? It's only a wild cow. So they have to leave the town and go out of their way to look in the open, in the farms, not out, outside the farms, and then get this kind of cow. And then they say to Musa, now you've brought us the truth as if they knew the description of the cow and they were testing Moses and now they are giving him the, the approval. Ayo Sheikh, kida kalam azbut. Right? Now we understand. So, and the Quran says, and they barely slaughtered it and they were on the edge of not finding it or not slaughtering it. They were just on the verge of missing the whole train. So they were reluctant. 
they were mocking, they were questioning, they were playing games with Allah and his messenger and his words, and then at the end they play obedient. وَإِنَّا إِن شَاءَ اللَّهُ لَفَاعِلُونَ إن شاء الله we will do it. Very, very obedient and very submissive. فَذَبَحُوهَا وَمَا كَادُوا يَفْعَلُونَ they nearly missed it. So, what is the story then behind this cow and the slaughtering of the cow and all of this? The story is here. And behold and remember, as you killed a person, you killed a man, and you threw the accusations against each other, the killed or the murder, the victim is from one group, from one tribe, and the killer is from another tribe, but the accusation is going all over the place to everybody. Everybody says it's not me, it's you. And Allah will certainly get out the truth that you are concealing. Allah will give you the result of your confusion and the result of your disputes. So how would Allah do it? Allah told them to slaughter a cow, and you got the story, right? And then after they slaughtered the cow, Allah told them, فَقُلْنَا ضْرِبُوهُ بِبَعْضِهَا Take a piece of the cow and hit the deceased or the murdered with part of it. What did this do? The cow is freshly slaughtered. They take a piece of the cow, they hit it, and the dead man becomes alive. And he says, my killer is so and so. And he goes back to death. Is this not significant? Is this not a miracle? Is this not an answer to all of their doubts and suspicions? You think it is, right? But mind you, we went over the ayat where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us that he put them all to death and brought them all back to life. In the early parts of the surah, we went over this. So is this more significant? And what is the difference? The difference is when the entire community dies and then all of them were brought back to life, it may be, it may feel they went to sleep, something took over the entire community, they were gassed, whatever. But now they are seeing with their own eyes a person that they killed, some of them or one of them killed, right? And he was dead. And just by following the commands of Allah, taking a piece of the cow, hitting the deceased person, he becomes life and he talks to them. And he goes back to death. Isn't this enough? You think it is more than enough. And it is. This shows you how merciful Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has been. And how patient Allah has been with them. They violate and they get stuck with some punishment. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives them relief. And they give them an order. They violate again. And they come back. He gives them relief. Save them from fear. Right? Brought them the book and the guidance relieved them from the worship of the calf and forgave them again, right? And when they refused and asked that we will not follow you, Musa, until we see Allah face to face, Allah put them all to death. In another way, Allah is telling them, you could never see Allah until you die first. And if you die on obedience and get to paradise and qualify for his mercy, then and only then you will see him. Right? So he puts them all to death, brings them all back to life. Are they obedient after that? He tells them, enter into the village, the town of Jerusalem. 
No. It has giant people in there. We will never enter until they get out. Always disobedient, reluctant, rebellion. And even with this, this is what happens with them. So Allah is telling them the lesson of this. كَذَلِكَ يُحْيِي اللَّهُ الْمَوْتَى If you, by hitting the deceased person with a piece of the cow, brought him back to life, this is not you doing it, it's Allah doing it. So he says, كَذَلِكَ يُحْيِي اللَّهُ الْمَوْتَى In the same fashion, Allah will bring the dead to life. Allah revives the dead. So this is a lesson directly for them and for us to really believe what they should have believed. Now the question is, but we didn't see this happening. We only read it in the Quran. Yes. Do you have to see? If you have to see all the ayat of Allah, then you must follow their footsteps. And Allah says, وَمَا مَنَعَنَا أَن نُنَزِّلَ بِالْآيَاتِ إِلَّا أَن كَذَّبَ بِهَا الْأَوَّلُونَ Nothing stops us from sending miracles and wonders to people except the fact that previous peoples, previous communities belied and denied those ayat. So what would make you different? We are all humans, right? And our minds work more or less the same way. So if you want to use your mind like theirs, you could. But le learn from their lessons. Don't ask Allah for what Allah has not shown you. And don't ask Allah to give you more than what he has already given you. And instead of using you personally as a learning tool for others, instead of making you the lesson, Allah has made the other communities as lessons for you. Why would you want Allah to repeat the same experience in your community? It's not wise. So what the conclusion is, لَعَلَّكُمْ تَعْقِلُونَ If you would only reason, so that you may reason, you may understand that Allah is capable over everything. إِنَّ اللَّهَ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٍ So this is the lesson. So this is what they learned. What happened with them is, ثُمَّ قَسَتْ قُلُوبُكُمْ مِنْ بَعْدِ ذَلِكَ After all of these ayat, all of these miracles that are all physical, mind you, all of the ayat are physical ayat. It is not something to imagine. ثُمَّ قَسَتْ قُلُوبُكُمْ مِنْ بَعْدِ ذَلِكَ فَهِيَ كَالْحِجَارَةَ Your hearts hardened. It became as hard as stones or rocks. Right? أَوْ أَشَدَّ قَسْوَةَ or even harder than rocks and stones. وَإِنَّ مِنَ الْحِجَارَةِ لَمَا يَتَفَجَّرُ مِنْهُ الْأَنْهَارِ Some rocks gush open and springs of water would rush or gush out of them. لَمَا يَتَفَجَّرُ مِنْهُ الْأَنْهَارِ It turns into rivers gushing out of rocks, out of stones. وَإِنَّ مِنْهَا لَمَا يَشَّقَّقُ فَيَخْرُجُ مِنْهُ الْمَاءِ Some of it cracks and water would flow out of them. وَإِنَّ مِنْهَا لَمَا يَهْبِطُ مِنْ خَشْيَةِ اللَّهِ And some of it falls out of the awe and the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Have you traveled through Pennsylvania, Route 70, 76? You see the signs, falling rocks, falling rocks, falling rocks. But have you seen rocks falling? Yeah, you don't wish to see it because it's a very scary situation. It is not a rock splitting out of a, uh, a big rock. When a, a rock falls, it normally isn't one rock. So you see the pile coming 
in front of you. It's very dangerous. It's very dangerous. But you wonder, you're seeing those signs in life and you are reading the explanation in the Quran. Those rocks were not pushed by somebody. Allah wants them to fall in front of you and to show you when they reach the level of fear of Allah, they shrink in size and as such they become loosened from their connection with the surrounding rocks. And when one rock loosens up, the surrounding rocks start to loosen and they start to fall. وَإِنَّ مِنَ الْحِجَارَةِ لَمَا يَتَفَجَّرُ مِنْهُ الْأَنْهَارِ وَإِنَّ مِنْهَا لَمَا يَشَّقَّقُ فَيَخْرُجُ مِنْهُ الْمَاءِ وَإِنَّ مِنْهَا لَمَا يَهْبِطُ مِنْ خَشْيَةِ اللَّهِ Some of it fall out of the fear and the awe and the glorification of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَمَا اللَّهُ بِغَافِلٍ عَمَّا تَعْمَلُونَ Allah is not unattentive or unaware of whatever you do. So you play a game with Moses, I'm here, I see, and I watch, and I hear. You mock Moses, I am recording it for you. You killed somebody and you create chaos in the community about it, I am going to resolve the crime, not with a tip, but with a miracle. Are you going to believe? The result is, ثُمَّ قَسَتْ قُلُوبُكُمْ And the Quran tells us about communities and people, whether individuals or groups, that they see lots of ayat, but they don't heed it. وَكَأَيِّمْ مِنْ آيَةٍ يَمُرُّونَ عَلَيْهَا فِي السَّمَاءِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَهُمْ عَنْهَا مُعْرِضُونَ وَكَأَيِّمْ مِنْ آيَةٍ فِي السَّمَاءِ وَالْأَرْضِ يَمُرُّونَ عَلَيْهَا وَهُمْ عَنْهَا مُعْرِضُونَ There are so many miracles and signs that we see in heavens and in earth. And we keep saying when we see those at subhanallah, right? But do we heed the lesson? Do we increase in faith? Do we increase in submission? Do we increase in coming back to Allah and repenting to Allah? This is one of the lessons that Allah wants us to learn. Don't challenge your own faith. Don't challenge your own prophet. Don't challenge your own sources like many people today are doing. In the Middle East, this is not a digression, that is some part of our reality. In the Middle East, the whole Middle East is hosting a conference this week. The ultimate success of this conference in their eyes is to control and change the message of Islam. تجديد الخطاب الديني How we present Islam Islam is a milieu religion It is a flexible religion It is an easy religion Don't make it difficult Don't tell us you have to do this, you have to do that uh, Don't give us all of these difficult things that we label as difficult So the leaders who started with three, four countries now ending, that there will be 56 Muslim nations gathered to meet Mr. Trump in Saudi Arabia, in Riyadh. The purpose is controlling the message. What does Islam say? What should the Muslim scholars say? And what they should never say? What ayat should go in the school books? And what ayat should never be presented to the children? Who's going to control the message of Islam? It's not their mistake. They are using their power and authority. Because we left them to control our life from bread to everything else. To control our freedom from movement to speech. To control our life from family to marriage to women, so-called rights, they already 
feel that they are so powerful, as powerful as Pharaoh. The only thing they are not saying to us is what Pharaoh said, Ana Rabbukum al But they are acting exactly that they are Rabbukum al They are the Lord, the highest. And they have the power to tell us what to do, how to understand our faith, and how to apply it. And they claim that the purpose is to counter the message of ISIS and Al-Qaeda and Al-Nusra and all of the organizations they label as terrorists. And definitely there are people who are targeting civilians for killing and violence. And that is not acceptable Islamically. Nobody said it is. But they go beyond correcting whatever is wrong to subjecting the heritage of Muslims to their review. Do you know that one of the greatest miracles of the Quran is that it is the only religious book that has never ever in its history been subjected to anybody daring to review what the Quran says. From day one of the revelation until our day today, except for the few years that just came after the Egyptian coup and the Arab Spring, only from that point, people started to come supported by their governments, scholars who are sold for the government, sold for the dollar, sold for their worldly gains, started to come. Yes, there are things that need to be corrected. There is no such and such in Islam. There is no hijab. Hijab is a culture. Uh, there is no such a thing as this. They start to carve out from Islam and throw away parts that they don't like. In the past three years, the, uh, uh, the Muslim nation school books have been reviewed in the past three years, three times. Every year, they remove some stuff. In Egypt, the example I have traced, they have removed about 70% of the ayat and the hadith from the school books because they consider it teaching violence. So they want the Muslims, unlike all other nations, to be a nation without nails, a nation without teeth. But that could have been good for taking violence out of the community, right? But they also wanted a nation without a backbone and without solid knees to make it stand. So what is the purpose? The purpose is submission and the deal that Trump is going to sign and oversee and sponsor is going to be bad for every Muslim. And it's not his mistake. It is our mistake. We let the cancer fester for long. And when the cancer festers for long, it is going to kill you. It doesn't go back. It doesn't go back. So why would Trump want to meet? Uh, yesterday I was reading in the news that he was so reluctant to go for that trip for three reasons. One is it's too long. Two, it is in a cultural context he's not familiar with. And look for number three. He would miss his bed. He's comfortable being here in Washington. And this is not my word. This is in the news. I, I have the article. So in any way, what would happen and what they plan is the United States is, not, is going to sell Saudi Arabia alone between 97 to $120 billion worth of weapons. Emirates is going to buy a little bit less. Again, billions of dollars of weapons into our area. Who is going to be killed with those weapons? And all of this 
is to get another yet third Iran war in the area against the Sunni Muslim nations. We need to take a stand. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save our ummah. May Allah save the world from those who are reckless and corrupt. الحمد لله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله وبعد Brothers and sisters Allah has given us the world in which we live as both a gift and a test and he allowed us the power of developing or destroying or shaping this world any way we want he has subjected to us everything there is in heaven and in the earth at your fingertips to use it any way you want. But he gave us guidance. What do we need to do? The question is, are we going to follow his guidance? Or are we going to abuse his gifts? Are we going to accept his tests and live through them with patience and perseverance? Or are we going to rebel those are questions for us to think about. Ramadan is coming, and we hope that Allah will make it our best Ramadan ever, and give us a chance to make tawbah that is good, and tawbah for good. Allahumma hdina fi man hadayt, wa aafina fi man aafayt, wa tawallana fi man tawallayt, wa qina wa asrif anna sharra ma qadayt. Allahumma qsim lana min khashyatika ma tahulu bi baynana, وبين معصيتك ومن طاعتك ما تبلغنا به جنتك ومن اليقين ما تهون به علينا مصائب الدنيا ومتعنا اللهم بأسماعنا وأبصارنا وقوتنا ما أحييتنا واجعله الوارث منا واجعل ثأرنا على من ظلمنا ولا تجعل مصيبتنا في ديننا ولا تجعل الدنيا مبلغ همنا ولا مبلغ علمنا اللهم لا توفنا إلا وأنت راض عنا اللهم لا توفنا إلا وأنت راض عنا اللهم لا توفنا إلا وأنت راض عنا اللهم اغفر لنا ذنوبنا وإسرافنا في أمرنا وثبت أقدامنا وانصرنا على القوم الكافرين أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم فستذكرون ما أقول لكم وأفوض أمري إلى الله إن الله بصير بالعباد وأقم الصلاه